Hi everyone. In this tutorial I just wanted to uh, present an alternative way to achieving um, what is commonly referred to as a star ball. Um, if you've seen my other tutorial uh, on how I did this in 3ds Max um, using a plug-in add-on called Mega Bevel, which by the way I highly recommend. It's a free add-on and it's it can do some fantastic things very quickly. Um, you've seen another variation of a star ball. Um, however, I wanted to show how, how I came to achieve this one without any additional plug-ins or add-ons using all standard uh, polygonal modeling techniques. Um, this could be easily translated into other packages as well, like uh, uh, Blender, for instance, or you know any capable uh, polygon modeling package. All right, so um, let's get started. First thing we'll do is go to Extended Primitives and bring a Hydra shape into the scene. If you're just starting, uh, you'll notice that it'll be the tetrahedron. Um, you could switch that to the dodec icos family and switch the q uh, family parameter to one and that'll give you a standard dodecahedron. All right and before we continue with anything um, we'll just uh, go ahead and quickly add the standard gray material and what I normally like to do is change the uh, wire color to black uh, for easier viewing purposes. All right, so this is how we'll start off with a dodecahedron. And first step will be to apply an edit poly modifier. And we'll give it a tessellation, uh, just uh, the standard edge tessellation with no tension uh, parameter is good and that's the uh, resulting edge flow okay so from here you can already see that uh, you know the edges that we need to create the the linked stars are uh, are visible so we'll drop down to edge mode and we'll select the five segments on one of the faces and then select similar to uh, get them all and then we'll shift click uh, the connect to bring up the caddy and we'll give it uh, three connect segments and we'll change the pinch radius to 20 and uh, what that does is it just spaces them out a little bit more but it brings that central edge closer to the center point of each face all right, so now that we have that, we'll go ahead and loop select the outermost pentagon on one of the uh, faces that we just created here. Um, then we'll select similar to grab all of them. And we'll switch to our uh, rotation tool. And make sure your rotation settings are local. And you're using the... Um, uh, the uh, center uh, pivot point U selection centers. Okay, and then we'll enable our transform type in, and on the Z axis, we'll rotate that first edge loop 20 degrees on the Z. All right, and then we'll go ahead and select the second um, uh, the second pentagon edge loop on all the faces and we'll give that a rotation of 45 so we're rotating them incrementally here and then what we can do here I think is just um, go ahead and in, in the edit poly uh, modifier next to the ring you see that there's these two uh, uh, up and down arrows and if you select the if you click on those it will select the next corresponding uh, edge loops or edge rings all right so we'll uh, see how it can cycle through them so that's an easy way just to jump to that third um, pentagonal selection 
All right, and on the third and final one, we'll rotate that 90 degrees. Okay, so now we have these these uh, twisted edges go emanating from the uh, center of each face. So what we'll do is we'll select one of the edges in between the uh, first two uh, pentagons, and we'll ring it, and then we'll select loop, and from there we'll select similar. And that grabs all of the uh, spiraling arms of you know each uh, star shape here. All right, and then the next step is to go ahead and extrude. And the height at this point is not important as much as the width. Um, you want to give it some height uh, and then adjust the width. And what I like to do is um, select the uh, visually, just keep your eye on the second uh, edge here uh, out from each one of these arms. And when you're adjusting the width, make sure that uh, to get, you're getting enough width on these spiraling arms. What I like to do is just match up, make sure that the uh, edges uh, of each segment on the second most segment from the center is are touching. And then I know that I have enough width. I mean, if you want to come back and, and play with this, uh, you know, a second or third time, you could uh, play around with the parameters and get different results. Um, it will you know, cause different uh, visual effects. But uh, for now, this is good. Um, you can see that there's a whole mess going on in here with edges overlapping and whatnot. We're going to correct that. Um, the first thing we'll do here is just start by selecting all of these triangles that make up that central star, and then select similar to get them all around the object. And we'll switch to our scale tool. And we'll just scale that down right about there. Okay, you don't have to make it disappear, but just scale it down somewhat. And now we're going to clean that up a little bit uh, by adding, with with all of those uh, central centroid uh, polygons selected, go ahead and just apply a relax modifier on top of that, and it will only affect the selected faces. And give the relax uh, modifier three iterations, and you can see that it spreads out those edges a little bit better, and uh, you know takes care of the overlapping polygons. All right, and cleans that up a little bit. So now that we've given it three iterations, we could uh, apply another edit poly, drop down to face mode, and continue to scale that down just slightly. All right, so right about there is good. All right. And so at this point, we want to select uh, all of our arms here on each uh, star. So what we'll do is just click loop, and that uh, takes care of that, selects all of the arms there. And we'll just invert that selection, and we'll remove those polygons just by deleting them. Okay, so now we have this shape, and... Um, what I typically like to do here at this point is go ahead and add a Spherify modifier to make it nice and round. All right, and then, um, you know, we could uh, add another Edit Poly and, you know, apply uh, some quick smoothing groups here. And it's looking pretty rough at this point, but we're going to clean it up a little bit further. All right, but we can add a Shell modifier. And... Um, I recommend giving it an inner amount of thickness because sometimes if you uh, use the outer amount you'll end up crossing with crossing edges eventually and uh, it could be you know some problems. You can use a little bit of both if you want but as you can see once I begin to cycle out the outer amount uh, we're, we're starting to have some surface problems. So use the inner amount. You can go as deep as you want, um, as thick as you want and you can always come back and change that later but I like this thickness here alright so from there we'll add another edit poly we'll go down to faces and we'll select all of the border faces in between each arm okay and then we'll go ahead and select similar and you can see what happens here uh, the select similar has not captured it's captured a, little, a couple of polygons that are uh, 
that we don't want it to capture that aren't part of that inner border. Uh, so, and you know, I've encountered this problem before, and no matter what parameters you change in here, it's always going to capture one of the one of the extra polygons on the outside. So, in order to prevent that, uh, what we can do is go to Edge Mode and go ahead and ring select all of those edges along that inner border and then click select similar and it should just capture all of those inner edges all where we need them and then you could just control click faces and that takes care of that extra edge getting caught all right so when you control click from the edge mode it'll only select the faces that are part of the edges you had selected so all right, so that's how to take care of that. Now we have all those selected. We'll go ahead and uh, inset them slightly just to create a nice, uh, a nice beveled look and sharpen up some of these edges for the next step, which is our Turbo Smooth modifier. And you can, you know, it depends on what you want to use this for. If this is going to be part of an interior design, maybe a lampshade or something like I used in my last tutorial for a star ball, um, you know, one iteration might be good enough unless you're going to, you know, really getting close on it. And then you can just use two iterations and uh, get a nice smooth look to it. All right, and this is the final result here. And it's a little bit different than the... Uh, than the last uh, star ball that we used with the be mega bevel modifier. All right, which uh, again I highly recommend the mega bevel if you're a 3ds Max user. It's a fantastic uh, plugin for free. All right, and there's no reason not to have it. Uh, you know, since it is free, it's it's wonderful to have in the toolbox. But uh, this just shows that we can do this and and get. Uh, a great result without any add-ons or anything just using standard uh, techniques all right and um, you know I think the uh, I think the shape here is appealing and it's you know a little bit not quite maybe a star maybe it's more like a uh, a flower ball or something <laughs> you know it's just slightly different than the previous uh, technique all right, but you know, just by going down and adjusting, uh, you know, you could still go down and adjust the shell here at this point, and you could see what results, you know, the different thicknesses will will give, and um, you know, you can get an entirely different result if you use different rotations on the uh, pentagons. Um, you know, you could go ahead and uh, maybe maintain that interface here and get some interesting results. Um, with just a, a solid shape with no holes, you know, it, it, all kinds of different uh, things you could play around with using this uh, basic technique. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, I'll be giving one more tutorial this week, uh, so keep an eye out for it. All right, and uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. All right, thank you very much. See you soon.